All right, so in the previous video, we uh, saw that the derivative of a function is itself a function, and we studied in detail the function f of x equals x. In this video, we'll study how to calculate the derivative of more complicated functions from the algebraic definition. Okay, so let's get started by looking at uh, the function that we saw already, which is the square function. So let's look at f of x equals x squared and try to calculate its derivative from the definition. Well, first, let's graph the function to know what we're looking at. So we've seen this function already, so the graph looks like something like that. Okay, now we want to calculate its derivative from the definition. So f prime of x is defined as being the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now we can replace the function here by the square function. So we get the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h square minus x square divided by h. To evaluate this limit, the first thing we want to do is expand the square here. So we get limit as h goes to 0 of x square plus 2x times h plus h square minus x square divided by h. Now we see that the x square terms cancel. So what remains is the limit as h goes to 0 of 2xh plus h square over h. We can now factor 1 power of h in the numerator. So we'll get limit as h goes to 0 of h times 2x plus h divided by h. And we can, just as in the previous video, cancel the h here because we're inside the limit. So we get the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h, which is now easy to evaluate because h goes to 0, so this term becomes 0, and all, all that remains is 2x. So in other words, what we've calculated is that the derivative of the square function is 2 times x, which is what we've obtained previously. Now the graph of that function is something like that, which is indeed consistent with the geometric interpretation of the derivative as giving the slope of the tangent line of the original graph. Okay, let's do a more complicated example. Let's calculate the derivative of the square root function. So we take f of x to be equal to the square root of x. Now first we should notice that this the domain of that function is restricted. So the square root only makes sense uh, if x is positive. So the domain of the square root function here is x greater or equal to 0. Now what does that function look like? Well, its graph will be something like that, which we see is only well defined for x positive, greater or equal to 0. Okay, so we now calculate the derivative. So again, I start with the definition. Limit as h goes to 0 of f at x plus h minus f of x divided by h. I replace the function by the square root function. So I get the limit as h goes to 0, square root x plus h minus square root of x divided by h. Now to evaluate this limit, I need to transform it because I'm dividing by h here. So what I'll do is rationalize the numerator. So what I'll do is multiply by square root of x plus h plus square root of x divided by the exact same thing. So I'm really just multiplying by 1 here, so that's perfectly fine. But by doing so, if I multiply the numerators, I will have no square root left anymore. So what I get is just x plus h minus x. So the square roots will all be in the denominator. And now I see that the x terms cancel. So I'm left with limit as h goes to 0 of h over h times square root of x plus h square root of x, just as before, can cancel the h's, and I'm left with this nice simple expression, and I can now evaluate the limit, I just have to set h to 0 here, and I get 1 over square root of x plus square root of x, which is just equal to 1 over 2 square root of x. This is the um, derivative of the square root function. Its graph is something like this, 
which you can convince yourself is consistent with the interpretation of the derivative as this local detangent line. Now there's something important to note here, which is that the domain of f prime of x is actually slightly smaller than the domain of f of x. Indeed, the derivative here is not well defined for x equals to 0, so the domain is for x strictly, strictly greater than 0. Now why is that so? Uh, well, it makes sense from the picture, right? Because any positive x here, the derivative will calculate the slope of the tangent line. But if I go to x equals to 0, well, this is the end point. So the tangent line is not really well defined here. And even if you wanted to define it as some sort of limit, you would end up with a tangent line which would be vertical, whose slope would be infinity. So the derivative here is not well defined, the tangent line is not well defined, which is consistent with the fact that the derivative is not well defined at x equals to 0. Okay, so now what we've seen is the following. So we started with the function f of x equals to x, which I can write as x to the exponent 1, and we calculate its derivative to be the function 1, which I could write as x to the 0. Then we studied the function x squared, calculated its derivative to be 2x or 2x to the exponent 1. I could have done the function 1 over x squared in exactly the same way, which is the function x to the minus 2. What I would have had is its derivative to be minus 2 times x to the minus 3. That's a good exercise to work out this case by yourself. And I also calculate the function, the derivative for the square root function, which I could write as x to the exponent 1 half, and what I calculated is that the derivative is 1 over 2 square root of x, which is the same as 1 over 2 x to the minus 1 half. So let me end this video with a little question for you. Suppose that I take a function as being x to the r for an arbitrary exponent r here. By looking at the four previous cases, could you actually figure out what the derivative should be? Just find a pattern here and try to figure out what the derivative should be for an arbitrary x to the r. It's a good question, isn't it? Well, we'll see what the answer is in uh, further upcoming videos.